So you bought your first mechanical keyboard. Maybe it's an Annie Pro or a Keychron, but now you're looking to upgrade to your first custom mechanical keyboard. Learning about custom boards can be very overwhelming. There's a lot of terminologies out there and different sources of information. One of the biggest issues with getting started with custom boards is trying to figure out what to buy and where to buy them. You can either buy parts via group buy or you can buy in stock parts. In this video, I'll be showing you various in-stock parts and kits that you can buy to get started on your custom keyboard journey. In-stock is a little misleading because chances are at the time of this video, a lot of these parts I'm about to tell you are probably out of stock and you're going to have to wait for a restock. However, um, waiting for a restock will be a lot safer than joining group buys because you won't have your money tied up for um, who knows how long. First, I'll be going over keyboard cases, plates, and PCBs. And then I'll move on to switches, and then stabilizers, and then finally keycaps. Let's start with 60% keyboards. The first option is three separate parts. You're going to need a tofu aluminum case by KBD Fans. And also on the same website, you can buy a DZ60 PCB and a aluminum, brass, or poly carbonate plate. The next option is a Brio 60 by Canon Keys. And with this purchase, you'll get a case and an FR4 plate. It doesn't come with a PCB, but also on Canon Keys, you can either pick up a hot swappable PCB, the Instant 60, or you can pick up a soldered um, PCB. 60% keyboards are the most standardized layouts out there. If you find other cases, plates, and PCBs, there's a good chance that they will match up. The biggest thing you're going to watch out for is the um, USB connection. You want to make sure that the USB connection on the PCB works with your case. Generally, for 60% keyboards, the USB connection will be on the left side. Let's move on to 65% keyboards, my favorite layout. The first option I'll tell you about is similar to the 60% option, um, a Tofu 65 case with a DZ65 hot swappable PCB. Um, if you want a solid PCB, you can pick up a KBD67 PCB. And then you can either pick up a aluminum or brass plates on the KBD Fans website. Another option um, by KBD Fans is the KBD67 Mark II. And this purchase will come with a case, hot swappable or solder PCB, and a brass plate. Quick note, the PCB here is different from the KBD67 PCB that I mentioned before. So um, I don't believe the two are compatible. Next up is a um, NK65 by Novel Keys. And this purchase will come with a case, hot swappable PCB, and aluminum plate. And right now it's planned to restock sometime in June. Going back to Canon Keys, they offer a Savage 65 um, keyboard. And this comes with the case, two um, FR4 plates, depending on what um, space bar size you want, and a soldered PCB. This is the only keyboard I've used out of the other 65% um, percent keyboards, and I will say that is a fantastic board for around $260. Last up for the 65% layout is the Alt by Drop, but specifically the high profile case. There is a cheaper low profile case, but I um, think it's really worth it to save that money and put it towards a high profile case. A high profile case really gives it that half and premium feeling that a lot of custom keyboards have. And with this purchase, you get the case with an integrated plate and a hot swappable PCB. Moving on to 75% keyboards, we have the KBD 75 V2 by KBD fans. And this will come with a the case, plate, and PCB. It also comes with OEM stabilizers, but uh, I also recommend replacing these with genuine cherry stabilizers. Also by KBD fans, if you're looking for something more premium, is the Bella. And it's not officially out yet, but it looks like it will come with the case, hot swap or solar PCB, and a plate. Next is the ID80 um, by Idolbao. And this is a case that comes with an integrated plate and a hot swap PCB. This ships from China, so who knows how long it will take for you to get this keyboard, but um, if you're looking for a hot swappable, 75% keyboard. I think this is your only option. And lastly, I want to um, talk about the Obliterated 75 by Canon Keys. Not a lot of information is out yet about this keyboard, but it's in the same um, Brio series lineup as the Brio 60 and the Savage 65. So we can expect a similar design language, an FI4 plate, and a soldered um, PCB. Next, let's talk about 10 keyless keyboards. KBD fans have the KBD-AX Mark II, and this will come with a case, 
solder PCB and a brass plate. And there's also a matching numpad if that's something you're interested in. Um, Canon Keys has the devastating 10 keyless. And again, this is not released yet and there's not too much information about this keyboard, but there are pictures floating around. And since this is part of their Brudo lineup, we can again expect a similar design language, a solder PCB and FR4 plates. Lastly, I want to talk about the control by drop. Again, the high profile version. This keyboard is pretty much the same as the Alt, but in a 10 keyless format. Now, lastly, I want to talk about the 1800 um, keyboard layouts. And there's only um, one option here. It's the Rec 1800 by Canon Keys. Again, it's part of their Brew Series lineup. It's not officially out yet, but we can expect similar design language, FR4 plate, and soldered PCB. I just went through a bunch of keyboard kits, cases, PCB, and plates. And what you're going to have to do is figure out what layout you want and then what keyboard you like the best. And this really depends on the look of the keyboard, the layout it supports, and the various features such as QMK support and RGB. Next, I want to talk about switches. And I'm going to break these into three groups, linear, tactile, and clicky. And for each category, I really try to get a range of cost for the switch from as cheap as like 20 cents switch all the way to like roughly a dollar a switch. First, let's start with linear. There's the Gideon yellows, alpacas, mauves. Mauves are basically just recolored alpacas and a different weight. Novelty creams, C3 tangerines, Gideon inks, and tilios. And what makes one linear switch different from another is I think two things. One, the smoothness of the switch, and two, how they sound um, when you use them. Next up, let's talk about tactile switches. There are the Lilacs, T1s, Holy Pandas, and Zilios. And what makes one tactile switch different from another is the feeling of the bump. For example, a Holy Panda will have a rounder bump, and a Zilios will have much of a sharper bump. Lastly, let's talk about clicky switches. And these are the type of switches I had the least experience in, but I have tried the Box J's and Navy. Um, there are also the Box White, the Novel Key Sherbert, and then there's also Gateron Blues. If you don't know what kind of switches um, you like in terms of linear, tactile, or click switches, the best way to figure it out is to really try them. And I don't mean um, buying a key switch tester like this and then trying them out on um, one at a time. The best way you're going to figure out what switches you like is to try them on a full size keyboard because um, it's very different when you're using all your fingers versus just using one of your fingers on one of these. Next, let's talk about stabilizers. I want to call out that you should definitely modify your stabilizers and I won't show you how to do it here, but there are tutorials you can find on YouTube and I'll link them below. But in terms of what stabilizers to buy, you can buy Duroc stabilizers if your PCB uses PCB screw-in or PCB clip-in um, stabilizers, which is a majority of custom keyboards out there. You can also buy Cherry stabilizers, but they're not recommended these days. But if your keyboard uses only plate mount stabilizers, meaning the Novel Key um, 65, sorry, the NK65, the draw controller alt, I believe your only choice is to go with a cherry stabilizer. Lastly, we're going to talk about keycaps. Unfortunately, your options for in-stock keycaps are very limited in comparison to um, keyboard cases. The best keycaps out there are really in group buys, and you can find them either at GeekHack or on the subreddit Mech Group Buys. But in, in terms of in-stock keycaps, you can find them at vendors such as KBD Fans and MelGeek, and I'll link them below. And when you're buying um, custom keycaps, you want to make sure that the kit that you buy supports your layout. So if you're using a layout like the 1800, uh, make sure it comes with a numpad. If you're using a 65% um, keyboard, make sure it comes with the um, shorter right shift. The goal of this video isn't to tell you everything you need to know to get started with custom mechanical keyboards. There's too much to cover in one video. Um, however, I hope this was a good starting point into figuring out um, the different parts that you can buy and where you can buy them. If you're looking to dive into the group buy territory, um, the best way to keep updated onto the various group buys that are happening are on GeekHack or the subreddit Net Group Buy. If you have any questions about the content of this video or about keyboards in general, um, leave a comment down below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Please like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to stay updated on my future content. Until next time.